Here's a situation where we're going to see a proof by contradiction within a direct proof. So we're going to start out with a direct proof strategy, but then we're going to need to prove a sub-result inside, and we'll use a uh, proof by contradiction within that. So um, the theorem we want to show is given a non-zero rational number r, there are irrational numbers, let's say x and y, with the product being r. So any irrational, any rational, any non-zero rational number can be expressed as the product of two irrationals. So that's interesting. Um, and it's definitely not true, i uh, let you think about it, if we, if we switch the rational and irrational here, and we're actually going to use that um, within the proof. Okay, so uh, here I've written it a little bit more symbolically, just to get people used to the notation when it's used in the book or when we want to use this for abbreviation. For every, it says for every, Rash every R, which is just a letter, and then we tell it, and then we say where that lives, what kind of object it is, in Q, the set of rational numbers, with R not equal to zero, that's the non-zero part, there exists X and Y in, and this is one of the notations you could use for the irrational numbers, it's a very handy notation, when you take a set, this is the set of real numbers, minus another set that's a, a subset of it, then you're just saying everything in R, every real number that is not a rational number. So this is one way to say the irrationals. Some people would, would denote this as like an I with a double bar, but that looks kind of like the Roman numeral 2, and it's not that, not that common. Uh, such that x, y equals R. Okay, so th that's not the main thing, but if you see that kind of notation, it's good to get used to it. Okay, so here's the proof. Okay, so we start out with the most common word to start any proof. If it's a direct proof, of a universal statement that starts out with a for every r, we're going to have to start talking about an arbitrary r, but we need to name it. So let's say let r be a rational number. Uh, and assume it's not zero. And that is incredibly common because most state more more often than not, you're going to be proving a statement that starts with a universal. Because uh, they're just more powerful, and they're more general and interesting, and they're more useful. That says for every such and such kind of object or number or whatever, something happens. And this is almost always the first word of a proof, at least if you're doing like a direct proof of that. So let R be a rational number. Okay, so that's an arbitrary rational number, but we need to have a symbol for it. Okay, and we're going to assume it's not zero. Okay, um, and now we're going to do this constructively. We're trying to show the existence of two things, and we're going to do it very constructively. We're just going to let x be the square root of 2, okay? And then we know that x is, I'll use the symbolism here, an irrational number by what's in the book. It's a famous, famous result that that's irrational, okay? And now we're pretty much forced to define y in a certain way. We know that x, y is supposed to end up being r, so we just let y be... Um, root 2, sorry, uh, r divided by root 2, okay? Then clearly, x, y equals r. That's one thing we wanted to show, okay? But we also need to know that they're both irrational. Okay, so this being irrational is from a big result, okay? Um, so we still have to show that y is irrational. Okay, no, that's a negative statement in a certain sense. Um, and so it's a thing we would be very natural to prove by contradiction. I'll leave the statement up there. Okay, so we just need to show that y is irrational. Okay. Um, so assume that uh, y is rational. Okay, but remember y was r over root 2. So that certainly says that r is root 2 times y, okay? Or root 2 is equal to uh, r divided by y. Okay. So there's root 2 equals r divided by y. Well, let's see. Uh, we're assuming that y is rational, and we already knew that r was rational. 
And one of the things that's fundamental about rational numbers is the quotient of two rationals is rational. So let's assume we know that. Well, actually, no, let's prove it. We know by definition, r being rational is um, r is a over b, where those are integers, and y is c over d. And so r over y is going to be ad over bc, if you do the calculation. And that is rational. There's our contradiction. OK, because we know that that square root of 2 is not rational. OK, so um, there's our contradiction. What does that show? Oh, I just erased it. Hence, y is also irrational. Just like, uh, just like x was. And we already proved that xy was equal to r, so we're done. OK, now. I purposely didn't explicitly show where I used that r was not equal to 0. And that's in the little quiz for my students. I'm going to ask, where did that come up? Where should I put that in to be really careful? Because you do need it.